Of all the building societies that converted to banks, Newcastle's Northern Rock operated the most extreme model. It was a story of hubristic ambition and ruinous fall of bankers who didn't understand banking. And we've all paid the price. The collapse of Northern Rock didn't just destroy the city's biggest bank. It destroyed thousands of jobs. It wiped out billions in private investment and it cost the taxpayer a large fortune. And it is one of the main reasons why millions of people in Britain had not had a pay rise in a decade. Northern Rock began life as a mutual, a society of savers and borrowers, pooling resources to promote home ownership in the Northeast. But in 1997, the Rock joined the wave of conversions from building societies to banks. Today, its customers were rewarded. Almost half have elected to cash in their 500 free shares, with minds already made up about how to spend their windfall. The Founding Fathers would never have imagined what a high-risk lender it would become. It became home to the 125% mortgage, and it made the classic banking error of borrowing very short-term on the bond markets, but lending to customers for 25 years or more. The problem is when you become overly dependent on borrowing huge sums of money from a very, na for a very narrow source, if those institutions or individuals decide they don't want to lend you anymore, you're effectively bust. Chief Executive Adam Applegarth was a new alchemist, but it wasn't just risky to fund a bank so much from loans. It was also risky to lend to British house buyers and then to sell those mortgages on to New York's casino banks. They packaged them up into parcels of debt and sold them on as well. The model worked fine when credit was free and easy and houses were rising in value. Back behind uh, the story of 07 and 08 is the extraordinary increase in leverage, in debt, which had occurred not just over a couple of years, but over 50, 60 years uh, before uh, that crisis. Savers and staff had joined the gold rush of what they thought was free money in the form of shares. General investors then piled in too. All their savings were now tied up in the bank's fortunes. Executives like Applegarth paid themselves millions in salaries in share options. And the board of directors, headed by aristocrat Matt Ridley, did little to rein in the rock's lending. After I questioned this kind of mortgage Ponzi scheme in my Daily Mail column, I received a call from the man himself, Adam Applegarth, from Newcastle, and he requested my presence at lunch at this London hotel. Needless to say, he flew down and arrived bang on time. And then came the crash. House prices fell, the value of those mortgages collapsed, and the bond markets had second thoughts about lending any more money to the rock. The cash flow stopped, but the bank needed billions just to keep running. So it went cap in hand to the government. Well, now we're going to bring you some uh, news, breaking news. One man had the scoop. ...result to provide some emergency funding. Now, to be absolutely clear, uh, this does not mean that Northern Rock is bust. I don't think there's any reason for depositors at Northern Rock to panic. But uh, panic they did. Uh, and privately, I've always felt that Robert's tone didn't help. The fundamental problem for Northern Rock was that the institutions that lent money to Northern Rock stopped lending to Northern Rock. And that would have happened whatever I had said that night. Even if, which I dispute, even if you hold me responsible for the queues outside Northern Rock the next day, I was not responsible for Northern Rock going bust. What, was, what caused Northern Rock to go bust was its excessively risky lending model. The run on the rock was a jarring moment for borrowers, for savers, for the politicians and the regulators. It was an extraordinary moment in modern British history. The banks no longer trusted each other enough to lend in the money markets and customers learned to their horror that money in the bank was no longer safe. Well, there was a real arrogance about uh, Northern Rock. 
and I think that the board let the chair, the chief executive officer, have his head on the whole thing. It was a race against time. Tens of billions in deposits had already fled the bank. Gordon Brown's government was desperate not to nationalise, fearful of being seen as a throwback to the Labour governments of the 1970s. But after repeated and desperate efforts to find a buyer, it was forced in early 2008 to do precisely that. And the rock turned out to be just a canary in the mine. Within a year, the tsunami which began in Newcastle would consume Gordon Brown's government. It would be forced to launch a trillion pound rescue plan to save the city of London from implosion. The systems that have been put in place to preserve the integrity of Northern Rock and other institutions have failed miserably. Financial Services Authority had adopted an approach of light touch regulation, which might just as well have been easy touch. There was an entire global economic uh, philosophy supported by a lot of very clever people, uh, in particular Alan Greenspan, uh, that the financial system was such a clever and self-regulating system, self-adjusting uh, uh, system, that you could rely on it uh, not to do uh, crazy things. Yes, the FSA was making uh, enormous mistakes, but it was making mistakes against a set of intellectual assumptions deeply held by some of the most lauded economists across the world and deeply held by most of the central banks uh, across the world, which are in retrospect just complete rubbish. The taxpayer took on the rock's rotten debts and the remaining viable assets were eventually sold to Sir Richard Branson's virgin money. Thousands of jobs were lost. Billions in shareholdings wiped out. In Newcastle and the North East, the collapse was a devastating blow to the community. The bank was a cornerstone of the economy, but also a patron of the arts, sponsor of sport, and a major supporter of charities. It was a, pretty much a disaster for the area. I mean, a couple of thousand jobs were lost for a start, of course. And there was a short term, there was obviously a bit of a panic amongst people to, to getting their money out, and that's not easily forgotten or forgiven. When Applegarth was removed from office in December 2007, he left with a full year's salary of £760,000, non-cash benefits of £25,000 and a pension pot of £2.6 million. At retirement, his income will be £305,000 a year. Yet the credit crunch and austerity intended to reduce government debt led to a dramatic shrinking of the economy. There have been no after-inflation wage increases for a decade. The squeeze on incomes lingers today. We have had a decade of stagnating and in many cases falling incomes. And, you know, that is why people are today so angry and it's why people voted for Trump, it's why they voted for Brexit, it's why we've seen the Corbyn surge, it's why we've seen Macron uh, elected. And, you know, the ramifications of what Northern Rock represented, extremely risky finance, we're still living with. Northern Rock broke all the rules on how to run a safe bank. Regulators failed to spot the dangers. The government failed to protect savers and investors. And whilst Newcastle has begun to recover, those responsible largely have escaped unpunished. <laughs> 